In this video, I'll cover adding end panels and face items to the sides and backs of cabinets. For cabinet end panels, there are two methods you can take, adding it as a panel or using a face item. There are a few differences between the two approaches. Let's take a look by placing a cabinet and opening up the cabinet dialog. Inside of the cabinet dialog, on the left hand side, is a panel for front, sides, and back. Typically, the program will default to the front side. Let's begin with the left hand side by clicking the drop down, coming down to the left side. Over in the cabinet preview is a rotate option. You can rotate the cabinet. As you make changes, you'll be able to see the updates. Below the side are the side type options. You can find a variety from unfinished to panel to auto panel to custom face. If you press the help button and then scroll down, you'll find an area that talks about the front, sides, and back. Specifically for the paneled, it will apply a panel to either side. Auto paneled will apply it only when there's not an adjacent cabinet or it's against the wall. And then later we're going to talk about using the custom face option. So I'm going to choose the type to be paneled and then you see the panel appear. If your cabinet default is using a slab door style, it may be more difficult to see the panel has been applied. On the accessories panel is where you can define what type of panel that's being used. Currently my default is using the framed panels. If you're using the slab panel, again it will be difficult to see. You can either choose the frame or you can browse out to the library, choose a manufacturer style door style or a custom door style. You can also apply those in a 3D view. For the parametric panel, the frame panel, you can change the thickness and then on the side panel options, you can choose that it's a full size panel. You can choose that it's full overlay. And finally, there's an option to extend to the bottom. If I remove the extend to bottom and full overlay, zoom in just a little bit, I want to make the front face item proud or flush with the end panel. You can go back to the front of the cabinet by clicking on the face item. On the left hand side reveal, currently it's set to be a sixteenth of an inch, you can enter in a value. In this case I'm going to put in a negative three quarters of an inch, make the change, and you can see that it makes the adjustment so the face item extends over the end panel so that it is flush or proud with the front of that side panel. Let's take a look at the second method, adding a end panel as a face item. Let's switch our side to the right side. I'll use the rotate handle and we'll take a look at the right side of the cabinet making this a face item. Underneath the side type, let's drop down and choose the option to make it a custom face. The default face item that is created is a couple of separations at the top and bottom followed by a blank area in the middle. You can now choose what style of face item you want. So switching this from a blank area, at the very bottom are two options, the side panel applied and a side panel inset. The applied option applies it on the outside of the box and likewise if we switch this back to the inset, it will provide it inset into the box. When you're using a face item, you have control over the item height. You can also remove other face items. If I want to extend this all the way to the top, I can remove the separation at the top, I can remove the separation at the bottom, and now I have the panel extended all the way down to the end of the box. Since this is a face item, I can extend this down to the floor since it's part of the cabinet box itself. With cabinet face items, you can use the split operation. Highlight the side panel, and you have access to split these horizontally. You can also split these vertically. So there's quite a bit more control when you're using a face item for your side panel. Just like we did on the other side of the cabinet, to make the front proud with the side panel, assuming it's an applied panel, you can come back onto the front by clicking on the face item, and in the reveal, you can enter in a negative value. We'll just make it three quarters of an inch and pull that right outside to the edge of the cabinet. Let's move on and take a look at the back side of the cabinet. On the side option, I'm going to switch that to the back. Using the rotate orbit, we'll slide around to the back side of the cabinet. One of the options underneath the side type is to use match front. This will replicate the front of the cabinet 
you can then change it from match front to use custom face and you can go in and modify the face items as you need to to customize the back. Sometimes using match front is a quick way to replicate the face items and then you can come in and make any adjustments you want to the different face items depending on your cabinet needs. Let me slide over. I've got a couple of cabinets placed in a configuration here. Let me grab my 3D camera and take a 3D view and let's take a look at a couple of options with cabinet side panels. And to make it easier to see I'm just going to switch my render view here to the technical illustration view. For the kitchen island I've already added the cabinet end panels to the left hand side of the island. On the other side of the island if you take a look I actually don't have the cabinets. I like to save myself a little time and I'll use the copy reflect about operation to flip the cabinets on the other side. The program is smart enough to transpose the cabinet sides to the opposite side. So what I'm going to do is just hold my shift key down, grab the two cabinets, use the copy button here and then reflect around the sink and then as we rotate around you can see that the end panels have been replicated on the opposite side in the correct format. With both of these cabinets having an end panel you may decide that you want a single end panel that will span both of the cabinets. Let me go in and just remove the end panels off of the right hand side of the island here. And I'm going to tile my view by pressing Shift F6 on the keyboard. To place a cabinet end panel that will span both of the cabinets, I'm going to place that as a loose cabinet door from the library. And as my library opens up, I'm going to use one of the manufacturers. I'm going to find the door that I'm interested in. Typically, these doors are designed to click on the cabinet front and replace the existing face item. You can place these in a free form or in a floating manner. Click on the object, come over here, click in the plan view to place the cabinet door. As I mentioned, typically these want to replace a face item that the program is going to ask. So we're going to go ahead and place it in a plan as just a fixture. I'll press my spacebar to get out of the placement mode. Click on the door. You see the front indicator to show the front of the item and then we'll zoom in very closely. We'll snap this to the edge of the box and then we'll just kind of pull it from end to end. And let me just slide that right up against the box. In the perspective view, I'll then stretch it up to the bottom of the countertop. You may find it a little bit more precise to do it in an elevation view. Placing these doors in a freeform fashion will give you a little bit more design flexibility when your designs require it. That wraps up this video on adding end panels and face items to the sides and backs of cabinets. To learn more, please see the built-in help file as well as our other videos. Thanks for watching.